Hello and welcome back to Guillotine 18th Century Chemist Theater. Today uh, we are going to talk about our second driving force. Last video we talked about precipitation as a driving force, and here we're going to talk about uh, acid-base neutralization as a driving force. Very, very close to the same thing. In fact, it's much easier, and we'll show you why in a second. So we're going to uh, define our heinous acids and bases. It's what most people think acids and bases are anyway. And then we'll show how uh, neutralization can be a driving force. So our Svante Arrhenius, a uh, very famous chemist, one of the first people to win a Nobel Prize. I think it's because uh, he might have been on the committee, <laughs> but he did a lot of um, uh, great work with electrolytes. Uh, he realized that solutions needed electrolytes to conduct. And then he did more research on acids and bases and ended up uh, coming up with the idea of what really an acid and base is. And from the simplest uh, term, the Ar idea of an arrhenius acid is something that produces uh, H-plus ions, uh, a.k.a. remember a proton, because a hydrogen atom is nothing but a proton and an electron, so once it loses that electron, it'll be in an H-plus ion. Uh, and so anything that produces H-plus ions in water uh, it are, is going to be considered an arrhenius acid. Now, for many people, again, that's just acid. But the idea of proton donors is a very common uh, example of, a, of an acid. So hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, when you put those in water, they're going to dissociate and produce uh, chloride ions, sulfate, polyatomic ions, and, and, of course, hydrogen ions. And that's what makes them an arrhenius acid. An arrhenius base is anything that produces hydroxide ions, when you drop them in water, such as sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. Now again, uh, later in the year we will talk about some more uh, inclusive definitions of acids and bases that, that go beyond uh, maybe uh, proton donors. Um, uh, but, but again, that's, that's enough for now, and uh, we can certainly beef it up later. Wait, wait, Ken bought a... Uh, uh, that's a tough one. And so, uh, uh, since they release ions in water, uh, these can be considered electrolytes. Anything that produces ions in water are considered electrolytes, so you still have weak and strong acids like you have weak and strong electrolytes. Again, unfortunate terms because there's a, there's a connotation behind the term weak and strong. Uh, but remember, it simply means strong acids or bases, really strong electrolytes dissociate completely in water. Uh, and then weak acids and bases or weak electrolytes do not completely dissociate. So some of the compound stays together and some of it dissociates. Uh, now, uh, we'll show through an example here in a second that when you mix an arrhenius acid and arrhenius base, uh, you typically get the same uh, net ionic equation every time. Now this, and I will say actually, <laughs> uh, this wouldn't be the case if it produces a precipitate too. Uh, but most of the time, uh, the hydrogen ions are going to react with the hydroxide ions and form water. And so they'll neutralize and form a liquid, in this case water, and that would be a driving force. And Kenbot's just there to remind you again that weak and strong uh, is an intensive property that refers only to the act of dissociation and nothing to do with concentration. So you can have very concentrated weak acids that can be damaging, and you can have very uh, dilute strong acids, which, which would be uh, benign. So what we're going to do then is we're just simply going to look at two examples of these. Now, these are very, very similar to the kind of reactions we see in a precipitation reaction. Uh, but in this case, it's even easier because um, we kind of know where we're going when we see an arrhenius acid and an arrhenius base. We know that we're going to be producing water. Now, and typically the other thing we'll produce is some kind of salt. But the classic acid and base neutralization is hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. Again, when we switch dance partners here, we're going to end up with the idea of forming water and sodium chloride. And, and so we know sodium chloride is aqueous because of our solubility rules and our, you know, simple... Uh, existence. We know that sodium chloride dissolves in water, and then of course water is a liquid, and so we have a driving force here. Now we can tease this out into a total ionic equation. Again, this one's super easy because it's came balanced, and so we can tease out all the ions of the aqueous things, um, and then we can of course cancel the spectators, and uh, as, I, as I said before, uh, we will end up with the classic net ionic equation for a neutralization reaction and that is hydrogen plus hydroxide yields water. So what we'll do is we'll look at this again in one more, uh, one more uh, perspective, just a, a different acid and a different base. We'll use nitric acid this time, a potassium hydroxide. 
I guess I should have used something that, again, this, this one's going to end up being a one-to-one -one ratio too. Uh, but, you know, it's the same idea. And so we're going to have nitric acid and potassium hydroxide. We're going to switch dance partners to form potassium nitrate and water. Again, potassium nitrate, group one metal and a nitrate is going to be very soluble. So we can tease out our molecular equation as before, cancel out our spectators, and end up with our total ionic, I mean, our net ionic equation, which again, should seem very familiar by now. Uh, a hyd hydrogen ions plus hydroxide uh, yields water. And so again, you, you should be uh, catching on to the fact that when you see arrhenius acids and arrhenius bases, uh, you're going to end up with a very familiar uh, molecular equation and therefore a very familiar net ionic equation. But I do encourage you to look and try to come up with um, an equation that will get you a precipitate. So try to see if you can find that. That's kind of fun. And also try to find a uh, precipitation reaction that will give you two precipitates, sort of like a double rainbow. And that's it. That's all we're going to cover today. Uh, and, and next time we'll actually get into the idea of redox reactions. Um, and again, we'll just dip our toes in that. That's a, that's a much deeper concept than what we are going to get into. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed watching. Uh, keep studying your chemistry and have a great day.